Hey everybody, I wanted to do an update on how I'm using peer grade in my classes. Uh, I did a video a couple weeks ago on uh, the use of peer grade to set up sort of like a, you know, an open space where students could give and get feedback from each other. And so I've been doing a little bit more work and fine tuning my assessment practices with my students. And I had a lot of questions and good feedback from the previous video. So I wanted to give you a tour on what I'm uh, doing here. So first off, yes, I am still on the free plan. There was some discussion about whether or not I was paying for this or not. Um, I have not yet paid for this and I have not asked the institution to pay for it yet. Uh, so I'm still doing all the free stuff that you can do in your classroom. So if I go into one of my classes, you'll notice that I have um, a series of assignments in there. This, what is digital literacy? This was a first assignment that I had students do uh, just to sort of get used to peer grade and how to use peer grade. But then, my class, most of my classes, I try to chunk the content. So in this specific class I'm in now, I have module one, then module two, three, and four. Each module will last two to three weeks. It's a way to sort of like slow down the pace or make it look like we're slowing down the pace of the class and make it easier for students to stay on topic and figure out where we're headed. So I just launched uh, yesterday uh, th module three and the assignments in module three. So three different types of assignments for every two to three weeks. One of which is the reflection post or a synthesis of the readings. Uh, then I have a unit plan update. So this is project-based learning frameworks. And the idea is that they're building up a unit plan over the course of the whole semester. And then each uh, module, I'll have them do a chunk of the unit plan. And lastly, they're also building up a lesson plan. So if I go into the reflection post, I can see that I open this thing up, I have it open up and I gave the students about a week, five to seven days to submit their work. And then I close the work at uh, midnight on Tuesday in this instance. It immediately opens up for feedback and then I give them about 48 hours to give each other feedback. So if I look into this in the settings, I basically indicate that they are to write up their response, the synthesis in a Google Doc and share it here. I also have it set up so that they can uh, only submit a Google Doc. Sometimes they mess up and they'll give me a PDF or other things. Uh, mostly I leave it to a Google Doc or set it as a Google Doc to make it simpler for students because then I get questions about what type do I want and I don't really care. I want to make it as easy as possible so that they submit. For this, so I allow them to submit. You saw the feedback round. I want to take a look at the rubric. So this is something that we've been modifying over time. Uh, I basically start off with something that your classmate did well. And once again, these are peers that are looking at the work of each other in the feedback round. Is the post at least 300 to 500 words? So I have the frowny face, the thinking, and then the smiley face. Does the post include hyperlinks, possibly to hypothesis annotations? Very important in my class. Does it include multiple examples of multimodal content? That would be images, audio, video, GIFs, etc. Uh, did the author organize this post? Does the organization support the argument? Um, and that was something that my students asked for. And then what was the main point or thesis of the post, the synthesis, and then something they could improve upon. So some editing that I did with students, you'll notice that of all of these, there's only a couple that require additional content, comments. So this one requires an additional additional comment, um, but basically these other ones, it's sort of just like a Likert scale or a basic Likert scale. Um, other things to note here, so this rubric I have saved in uh, peer grade. So the really nice thing is under personal. So you can, once you create a rubric, you can, it'll automatically save for you. So every uh, time I add a new assignment or across different sections, I can pull over the rubric I've already created. So I'm going to cancel that out because I don't want to mess this up. I also have this set up so that, um, what is else in here? So I have just the Google Doc. Uh, one of the things that I want to change to is because the rubric is a little bit longer and the feedback is a little bit longer, my students requested that I limit that to two people. So we're limiting to two people and we're also turning on this option so that I sort of stop students from uh, giving and getting feedback or seeing their feedback until they've completed their work because sometimes students will shortcut that. Um, I don't really change anything else. I don't deal with groups or categories. Uh, we already saw the rubric. 
and that is the assignment for the synthesis. So pretty basic. The unit plan and the lesson plan uh, are mirrored in strategy. So you can see that one student already submitted the unit plan, not surprised. The timing is similar. It's actually identical to the earlier piece. So it closes at a certain point, opens immediately, and then they have a couple days, 48 hours to give feedback. The settings uh, should be the same. So I'm gonna turn off these. And then on the feedback, I'm gonna limit to two. And then I'm going to turn on this option here. When I look at the rubric, mention there's something this, this classmate did well. Uh, and as I said, the unit plan and the lesson plan feedback is pretty much identical. Uh, so purpose, what's the purpose for the unit plan? On the lesson plan side, I say, what's the purpose for the lesson plan? Um, once again, this one requires additional comment, but there is a Likert scale, the smiley face. Audience, is this developmentally appropriate for your audience, this unit plan and the lesson plan? The design of this, is this creative? Is it uh, student inquiry based? Uh, does it try to solve big problems out in the world because this is a project based learning unit? The driving question, uh, what is it and is it student focused? Uh, give us a little bit of feedback here. And what's something the student, uh, your classmate can improve upon? Uh, so once again, that is the rubric for the unit plan. The lesson plan rubric is pretty much the same, um, but it's basically guided on the uh, lesson plan, obviously. So I have all of the details here and what to do. And then I turn off these other options. I go to feedback, change this to two, turn on this additional option. Um, and then the rubric, purpose of it, audience for it, lesson plan design is a creative, uh, what are the student learning objectives as opposed to the driving question, and then what's something they could improve upon. Um, so once again, peer grade is a valuable tool for me. A lot of my students do, all my students do work in Google Docs. They share those Google Docs out to peer grade. Peer grade creates this sort of like uh, playing ground or this, this sandbox where they can give and get feedback. One of the challenges that I have with peer grade is in class, I will talk about peer grade, I'll do videos, and, and I share these videos that I'm creating with students to see how to do this. Sometimes I'll give, uh, I'll get comments where people don't understand what a deadline is. So they'll, you know, two weeks later or a week after, or even a couple days later, you know, after this submission round closes, or after this feedback round closes, they'll say, well, I tried to go in and submit my work and it wouldn't let me. And I would say, well, there's a deadline. The, the deadline has passed. Um, or, you know, I try to go in and give feedback and so I can get credit for that part and I say, well, you missed the deadline. Um, there is the option, the opportunity to go in and allow students to, uh, you know, submit work late. I usually don't have them do that. If they're late, they're late. My syllabus indicates that you're late. Uh, there is a point deduction, but you can turn in until the end of the semester. I'd have them email me their Google Docs so I can give them feedback on my own, but there's no reason to interrupt the process for everybody else. So once again, peer grade, really powerful tool. It's filling a lot of needs for me, um, and I will continue to play with it and see how to improve upon it, and I'll share what I'm learning. Uh, thanks again. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Please give me a comment down below if there's something that I did not address that you think that I should. Have a great day.